Paris, and I'm also the proud mommy of two little princesses. Uh, this year, we kind of went through a roller coaster. We found out that one of our daughters is actually celiac. Um, you know, we went through many doctors, that type of thing, finding out more about information about it. Um, I realized there wasn't actually that much information about how to actually create a gluten-free home. Um, so I just wanted to walk you guys through my kitchen, through the process of, you know, what could be contaminated and why. And, you know, with her being so small, any tiny trace of gluten can really affect her body. And then all the progress that we've made is just going to go backwards. Um, so I just started with the dishwasher, empty it out and run it through a few cycles with no cleaners or anything, just on power wash and really get it clean. Uh, your microwave, you're going to want to clean that out as well. Um, use your paper towel. You're going to want to use paper towel throughout the entire kitchen. Um, one swipe is going to get the gluten out with your paper towel and then another one to dry, okay? You don't want to be using the same cloth cleaning everything um, because you're just spreading the gluten everywhere. So just really decontaminate it by using that paper towel. And then any anything that you use to store your food in, really like any plastic containers, just if they ha they're made out of plastic and not glass, I would personally get rid of them. Um, it's all trapped in there, you know, it's just not worth it. Um, go and just get a few new storage containers. Uh, with your ovens, you're going to want to do a uh, self-clean mode on them and then once again use that paper towel to get rid of the gluten on the bottom. Um, you're going to want to get a new uh, hand soap as well as uh, liquid dish soap. Uh, your sponge, you're going to want to just toss that out. Probably has gluten all over it. Um, and then when you come to your um, appliances like a toaster, your toaster has gluten inside of it. Um, there's no way to get it out. Just toss your toaster, don't eat your toaster, and then um, plan on buying a new one. You don't need it in the first week. You can always use a frying pan to heat up toast. Um, just do some research on a toaster you like. Um, all the utensils that you use to cook with, all your wooden ones, all your plastic ones, all your metal ones. Basically, you want to donate those because there's gluten inside of them. Uh, and they're, no matter how many times you put them through the dishwasher, you don't know if you're actually getting it all out. And once again, if you're just planning for a gluten-free home, it's not worth it. Just donate that. Um, and then coming to your cutting boards. Um, unfortunately, all your cutting boards, as you make these... Uh, cuts with your knife, the gluten is going inside. So then you're also going to get a new baking sheet. All the gluten is actually baked into the Teflon or whatever surface was in there. So one new baking sheet is definitely something that you should invest in. And then, make the old one. And then um, all of your pots and pans really, um, all of the non-stick coating, it's really good for actually taking the gluten and soaking it right in there. Especially if you have any old cuts, things like that, the gluten's going right in there. So this is something that you should just donate um, and then invest. I got away with, in a year, I got away with one large pot, one large uh, frying pan with a lid, and then two smaller frying pans. And that was perfect for our family for the year. And I would go to your local store, get something cheaper, because as I'll talk about in another video, uh, you start realizing that you cook three days or three times a day, and you want to get something that you really like. Um, so I think investing in something cheaper is a great idea for now. Um, so just go to your local store and pick that up. As well, you'll need a new strainer. Um, they say even the metal strainers that you can put through the dishwasher many times, you still won't get every last piece of gluten and it's just not worth it for your family to have that in there. Um, new baking mitts um, as you pick everything up from your oven, you're unfortunately getting it contaminated. Um, and then spices, uh, all of the McCormick spices, the single origin spices, um, they are gluten free. 
as well as that nice Costco uh, roast garlic pepper blend that says right on there gluten-free. Uh, spices is where a lot of gluten is actually hidden. Um, so I would just donate all of your spices, even if you think that they are the McCormick's or anything like that. There is a chance that you used um, a spoon that had gluten on it, especially for a cinnamon, let's say you were baking. You could have used that spoon to mix uh, flour and then put it in there. Um, so definitely something to donate um, to the food bank. And then also uh, in terms of that, oils. Um, any type of oil that, you know, it, it's not a pour, it's a scoop like the uh, coconut oil. As you're scooping it out, you could have uh, gotten gluten inside of it. So pick up some new oils. Uh, so when you, on your first few days, pull about three hours at the grocery store because it's going to take you a while to read every label and then uh, think of all of the new things that you need. Um, for example, all your baking supplies, um, that's just going to need to go. Um, you're going to need you know, to donate your flour, your sugar, um, your baking powders, that type of thing because once again, you don't know when you were baking what you were contaminating. Um, for your baking powder, there is a gluten-free baking powder. Baking soda is gluten-free. Um, so you're just going to need to do a little bit of research on what types of flours. And I can go through in another video what's my favorite new flour and my new pasta sauce and my new pastas. As well with your fridge. Um, you're going to want to just, you know, all of your jams, jellies, uh, mustards, anything really that you could have um, put your spoon into, anything like that. Um, anything that's a pour should be fine. However, you want to make sure before you keep it that it is gluten-free. Um, for example, soy sauce is not gluten-free and it says here on this label that I bought a gluten-free soy sauce and it is a pour so it's safe. However, you know, anything that you decide to keep, you want to remember that you're buying new frying pans. So you want to make sure that you're only keeping things that you know weren't contaminated and that are gluten-free because then you're just ruining pots and pans again for no reason, right? Um, and then basically that's about it. And, you know, with us being a gluten-free household, uh, something that me and my husband tend to do is we have a uh, celebratory Friday night when the kids go to bed. Well, you know, I will never cook gluten in my house uh, and contaminate my kitchen. However, I'll line the counter with paper towels and then I'll open up a pizza box that we ordered and I'll use disposable plates. We eat in one designated spot, we clean the spot afterwards and we just kind of you know, enjoy the luxury of being able to order in because that's something that unfortunately with the celiac disease, you're gonna notice that you can't order in that much. Um, and then uh, in another video, I will continue on through craft supplies, um, my favorite baking things, my laundry detergents, that type of thing. Um, so I hope you subscribe and enjoyed my video.